I, I'd like to talk with you a little bit in front of the folks today about what happens, what happens to a person, and, and then we'll talk about what happens to a group of people who uh, experience a loss of trust. But let, let's start, about, start off talking about an individual who loses trust for whatever reason. What kinds of damage does that do? Yeah, well, what we kind of know now and believe is that human persons sort of come out of the womb uh, ready to trust and ready to be in relationship. But as we all know, that easily can be de derailed. Uh, and when that happens, I think, um, again, we're sort of talking in generalities here. So, you know, some of this will apply and in, 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 in there is individual variation uh, amongst people. But um, I think we see three things when, when an early sense of trust is, mis or is broken, it leads to what we call mistrust. And I think there's three components of that, is that when a person kind of grows up and learns that the world is not trustworthy, because again, they've sort of been in relationships that haven't been consistently available and reliable. Um, one of the, the typical things is people go into isolation. They pull in, they sort of round up their own emotional wagons, if you will, in a circle and pull away from the rest of the world. And that isolation can quickly turn to a kind of paranoia, right? Because now the world is dangerous and people are dangerous. And, uh, and when the world is dangerous, it can then surprisingly turn into a kind of violence where um, I have to protect myself, and by protecting myself, sometimes I will do violence to the other first. I will push them away. I will hurt them before they hurt me. Um, or maybe sometimes it's just even a kind of the violence of ignoring or, or um, um, devaluing the other, even if that's in my mind. Well, yeah, the good news, we believe, is that if one has sort of um, been in an environment where people have not been consistently reliable and available and a sense of mistrust has been formed, that we can redevelop trust again. But I have to say, first of all, it may be a lengthy process for some of us. It may be difficult. It may require a therapist. But, but it, what we think it requires is, is what I, three R's, I like to call them, um, <laughs> just so it's easy to remember. The first is re-relationshipping. That's difficult to say. Um, but that people need to find themselves or put themselves in, in, in places where they can be in relationships with individuals who are trustworthy. We essentially have to relearn that the world can be, uh, 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 that we can trust. So that's the first part of it. Um, the second part of it is remembering. Um, when, when someone who's, who's grown up and has been uh, sort of uh, sees the world in, in mistrustful ways, when they get into relationships, even with people who are trustworthy, they're going to anticipate being let down, right? They're going to be, they're going to expect to be hurt, and so sometimes they're going to see uh, lack, they're going to see mistrust in a variety of places, even where it isn't. And when that happens, if they're in relationships with trustworthy people, hopefully those people can say to them, I know you feel hurt. I know you feel that you've been let down. But I just want to help you remember all the times when you haven't been. I want to try to help you remember the time that I was there for you. And even though you feel hurt and disappointed now, remember that time before. And so remembering is a really important part of that. And then third is really rehearsing. Because uh, being in a relationship with a trustworthy person is not enough. We actually have to learn to become trustworthy people ourselves. If you've grown up with an atmosphere of mistrust, you don't know how to be a trustworthy person. Because again, you're isolated, paranoid, and maybe mm -hmm. doing violence to other people. So when we're in those relationships with others that are trustworthy, we get to imitate them. We get to begin to live and behave like them. And in fact, we know that in the brain, there are neurons that are specifically there for us to imitate um, people around us. And so if we're in those good relationships, we can begin to rehearse what it means to be not only in trustworthy relationships where we are experiencing trust, but that we become trustworthy people to others. Then can we use some of those same resources, the three R's, to try to, to repair that relationship that one would have with God. Can you do that? Sure, I think so. I mean, I think this is where the idea of, of that we are the body of Christ becomes quite literal. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and you're always saying God wants a body, and I think that's so true. That's who we become. A good, a good body. A good body. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a trustworthy body. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, this is why discipleship has always been important. Mentorship has always been important. Small groups and Sunday school classes and in places where we can get into communities where we can learn once again what it means to not only be able to trust, but to become people who are trustworthy. Um, you know, one of the dangers, I think, is that when we become isolated and paranoid as a community, that we begin to do violence to people who are not like us, who are others, who are strangers. And sometimes that violence is nothing more than ignoring people, forgetting about them, not paying attention to them. But again, if we're in, if we're in communities where there's trust, what I've seen is that we then begin to be able to move out of our communities 
and look at the people out there who are, who are suffering from, from communities of mistrust. And see them as something other than a threat. Right, right, right. There's someone we can help and can help us, and we can teach one another rather than something that is dangerous that we need to keep outside. So what, I, what I'm going to try to say a lot this, this season is there is an individual aspect of faith, no question about it. We will continue to pound that nail. But I'm also wanting to say to this bunch of people, there is a corporate aspect of faith too. And I'm going to suggest today that perhaps um, a, this gathered up body that is supposed to be the body of Christ can itself experience God to be untrustworthy. And so what you're saying is we perhaps can use, maybe there's some wisdom in some of the rituals that we do that help us to re-relationship, right? right? And right. remember right. and rehearse. Right, right. That's why we have to do that. We have to gather together, and, 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 and you've said it, and, and, and we probably know it to some extent, but throughout Scripture, God is always reminding us to remember. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's what we do, and we have Lent, is we remember what God has done in Christ Jesus. We remember his faithfulness, his trustworthiness to us. Um, and, 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 and that happens as a body, and I think it changes us as a corporate body, not just as individuals.